Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So today I thought we would do a little video talking about some questions that I have when it comes to Enlisted. Recently, Enlisted on the official Twitch channel and also the YouTube channel did a Q&A. Uh, they had a developer on and they also had a community manager on and the idea was to feed questions to the developer about, um, you know, certain topics. Unfortunately, at least in my opinion, the Q&A itself was more of a PR exercise than it was an actual way of being able to answer some interesting questions. There was a lot of them which are repeat ones or a lot of them which are redundant ones um, when it comes to uh, generally looking at how the game is, but I suppose uh, you always have in press conferences or Q&As, you always have those questions which are really simple, um, but have to get answered uh, in order for people to, you know, have actual answers on them. But for me, uh, after dealing with stuff like this for a very long time, when it comes to gaming and also uh, just Q&As in general, I'm kind of bored of them. I might put the Q&A up on the channel, um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if I will or not, um, but at least in this video, what I'd like to go through is three of the questions that I would personally like to ask, and uh, also uh, give some ideas behind them, and also where I'm coming from, so they cannot be misunderstood. So the first question is a pretty simple one. Will being able to disassemble or buy multiple items at the same time ever occur? Now, this kind of harps to the older system when it comes to uh, how bronze orders and silver orders worked and also how you would upgrade weapons or you would get soldiers. But it is still something which is uh, tenable today uh, with the changes to how you get um, units and how you get weapons as well. One of the things that has to be understood is sometimes when you are upgrading stuff, uh, especially if you want to upgrade a whole squad at once, getting or uh, buying multiple things at the same time would be really nice to have. It is not as necessary nowadays compared to before since they've removed the RNG loot boxes uh, from getting stuff such as soldiers and also getting stuff such as weapon orders, but at the same time it would still be nice to have, especially on the disassemble side of things, if you have a bunch of weapons from previous stuff uh, that you want to get rid of. So this is more of just another functionality thing, and since over the last year or so there's been a lot of additions to functionality, especially in the UI design of the game, I thought why not add kind of a little bit on top of it. It's not a huge deal, as I said, especially in the current system, and if somebody is starting off today, should be a lot easier to manage these things. But at the same time, it is something to at least think about, especially when new squads come around and people want to kit them out properly. The next one is mainly about implementation for campaigns. So when implementing new levels to a campaign, will they always be at the end of the line of the campaign? Or will there be some which are in the middle of the campaign? This was kind of uh, thought about, at least for me, um, when it came to the additions uh, that we've seen to certain campaigns. So with uh, stuff such as the three squads coming out, you know, Assault of Three, Infantry Three, and so on and so forth, what we're sometimes seeing is them having weapons which, in my opinion, are inferior to the previous ones. The Car 98, for example, with the anti-tank grenade on it, is very much inferior to the earlier uh, weapons. And as a general idea and progression, as you go through campaigns, you would want it so you get better um, you get better stuff as you go along. But unfortunately, right now, that's not always the case. So sometimes you uh, unlock stuff which generally doesn't feel very useful. Uh, the fighters uh, for the planes is one of those which is kind of like that, but that's more because of their design role. But let's say uh, if they are in the Moscow campaign, for example, you have like the PPSH with the drum, right? Well, uh, if they wanted to add the PPSH with the stick, and I understand there are some historical questions to ask um, around that and when it was available and so on and so forth, but just take this as a hypothetical and apply it to other situations. If you put it, if you put it in the current system, 
which we have now in the game, it would come after the one with the drum. So why would anybody use it? Um, unless, you know, the reload was a lot quicker or there was some reason to uh, use it after, after that point. So it would have to be a hell of a good one since the clip size is one of the defining factors of those guns. So for me, um, it's definitely a question that needs to be thought about, especially since uh, as the game is going to evolve over time, and also at the same time, the matchmaking will eventually evolve as well, um, which will cause a bunch of other things to, to go on. You know, they've talked about the idea of adding level matchmaking in um, or just uh, general matchmaking <laughs> instead of what we have now, which is kind of more of a free for all matchmaking. But the, the main thing um, is when it comes to implementing uh, these new levels in the campaign, are they always going to be end of the line or will it be uh, the fact that there'll be some where you'll just be able to go in, um, you know, go in and put them in the center. And will that move everything up one? What will happen to stuff you've already researched? Will you be able to go back and research it? You know, there, there's a there's a bunch of questions around it. Or are they just going to keep adding levels on top of things and to not always necessarily be better? I'm sure, you know, when it comes to planning for these campaigns, one of the things that's been done is they have planned ahead. Um, it's very obvious that they've done that when you have a look at the content that has uh, come out. But also at the same time, plans can change uh, down to the fact that maybe, um, maybe uh, stuff isn't ready in time. And maybe they have to implement something else first. So that's just generally um, a thought that at least I've had. The last one is also something pertaining to the future of the game. And it's when adding additional campaigns, how are you going to combat the splits in the player base? And this is something which became very obvious uh, when Tunisia came out. And now is a little bit better uh, when it comes to the campaign itself. But what ended up happening uh, is uh, when the campaign was released, pretty much everybody that I knew um, uh, started playing Tunisia and the win rates were very imbalanced uh, when it came to Tunisia. And what this meant was when the new campaign was added, everybody just played one side and it's massively skewed. Um, at least my perception of the campaign itself. But also what it did is it took players away from other campaigns, meaning that queue times increased, plus a few other changes to the game made the queue times increase. So when we have a look at um, that idea, how is that going to be combated? Now, they, they said in a previous Q&A, the idea of having a, uh, a queue up where you can basically queue up for any campaign which is going on. So kind of a global queue up. And I thought that was a pretty good idea, uh, but it still doesn't really solve the issue, especially if people are devoted to a singular campaign over many. Now, my solution to this would be any additional campaigns you already add to the campaigns that exist. And then uh, what you do is you either create branches off of it or you create extra levels on top of what we already have and then just add the new maps to it. So instead of having a Stalingrad campaign, you change the invasion of Moscow into the Eastern Front campaign or the um, Operation Barbarossa campaign. And then you can add all of the different stuff from there. Instead of the Invasion of Normandy campaign, you call it the Western Front or the Battle for France campaign. Then also you've got stuff such as Tunisia, which could become a North African campaign as you add more and more stuff. This, to me, would combat the split in the player base because there would still be the same matchmaker and you'd still be able to play on the same things, maybe just grinding out uh, different units. But at the same time, it would be nice to hear the thoughts uh, from the team behind Enlisted uh, what they are uh, thinking of when it comes to this. I mean, obviously, you could do small things uh, when it comes to marketing, such as um, stuff um, like, you know, bonuses, like they did for Tunisia, like bonus XP to get people into the campaigns, and also um, other stuff such as little events to be able to get people into campaigns. But I'm really interested to see how it's going to be combated going forward. Because as you add more campaigns, because, you know, the because the matchmaker is split for each of the campaigns, 
uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know, is is it gonna is it gonna get to a point where we're gonna have so many campaigns? Certain campaigns are just going to be dead because you might as well just play the other ones, which have either better stuff or maybe the matchups are slightly better for you, or maybe you just prefer the maps more. Um, or is the idea to only add campaigns when the player base is sufficient enough? There's all of these questions that would be really nice to sit down and chat about, but say la vie. Unfortunately, we don't live in that world. But those are the major three questions that constantly go through my head when it comes to Enlisted and when it comes to the general ideas. Uh, hopefully, we get some more Q&As in the future. I'm sure we will. But as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, BRFC15, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, and then Carl Kinn, Bereen, Lafouche, and also Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.